everyone. Welcome to today's Everything Digital TV. And my name is Faith History. And as always, this is the show where we take a deeper dive into tech and just into like everything that's digital in our world today, especially right here in Nigeria. So today I want to take a look at something that's a little different for me, but I want to look at some of my favorite mobile tech innovations, like things that have changed that we don't even think about, but they've changed over time especially over the last five to 10 years. All right, so let's check it out. First off on my list, let's take a look at touch screen, right? Remember back in the day, you would have your mobile phone and you could just press, the, they had the numbers and some of the old Blackberries still have that, uh, old Blackberries, even the new Blackberries have that where that you've got the buttons and you know, you've got the keyboard, right? Um, and now no more keyboards. Everything is touch screen, this touch screen, that you get to just, you know, scroll through and there's a keyboard in there, but you don't have to press it, if you know what I mean. So what do we love about that? Obviously, the user interface is prettier, it's cooler. Everything that you want in your phone, you could just scroll through it, swipe through it. You should watch the kids do it. It's so cool and so quick, the way they just grab onto a phone, no matter how young they are, and they just get it, right? So we love touch screens for that. However, for people like me with like the thick, thumbs sometimes it gets to be a bit much where you know you're struggling a little bit more to to get those keys in or press those um uh, press that keyboard and get those letters in and that's when you can just go ahead and be like an old grandma and increase the font size on your phones so touch screen for me would be number five coming up next we've got number four at number four voice services have you ever thought about the fact that talking to your phone and having a talk back is actually a newish development. Like it never used to be around for the longest time. This service is known as a virtual assistant. And usually most virtual assistants, they need a wake word. So for Amazon, that would be Alexa. For Apple, it would be, hey Siri. For Google, it would be, hey Google. And so those types of voice services are very, very common today. And sometimes voice services even go as far as, you know, a voice assistant that's actually leading you through uh, traffic, like, you know, uh, the one for Google Maps or different types of voice services that we all experience today. But the very first one was actually Siri with Apple. So what do we like about voice services? Well, you know, they help us to keep our lives in check, make us feel like tech is cooler. For a lot of people, they use it actually for home, um, for home what would it, security, right? They keep their home secure. So they tie the voice service into their home security service and you know, they keep their home secure. However, those types of next level, um, you know, tech and security level uh, tech is not yet in Nigeria. I don't know a lot of people that use it, but I can assure you it's coming our way. Now, some of the cons for me is that it's expensive. Like who can afford it? Like I said, it's not very common. However, you, most people can afford to have a smartphone and most people have Google installed and most people can actually say, hey Google. So if you're not using voice services, you certainly should be. Coming up next, we've got number three. Coming in at number three, we've got inductive charging. This is basically wireless charging. How does this work? It works from using an electromagnetic pad to basically transfer the electric charge, right? And so you don't need cables anymore. And this was first started or first tried out uh, with Nokia with the 920 back in 2012. And since then, you know, a lot of people and in the marketplace, there's been a lot of um, proliferation of wireless chargers. Do you have one? I don't. I, I'm still one of those people that I'm just a little bit like skeptical. Like, hmm, are you really going to charge? But I have tried my brother's and for me, it was a little slow. And it, when he told me how much it cost, I was like, whoa, you know, so it's still kind of expensive. However, that is the future. It's a new development. You guys better get with the wireless charging get rid of the cables. You should see my room, like the whole floor is just full of cables. So I need to get me some wireless chargers and go towards inductive charging. Coming up next, number two. Number two, biometric security. Remember that time when 
all you had to do was have a username, password, as your security. Now things have gone way further than that. Um, a lot of people have their thumbprints. You know, I do on my cell phones. Um, you can also use your iris on some biometric security um, interfaces. So for the office, some people have to use their iris. That's why you must make sure nobody cuts out your eyes. <laughs> Anyways, just a joke, evil joke. Next up for biometric security is, you know, again, we've talked about fingerprinting, we talked about the eyes, all types of body parts. Now, that's a con for some people because, you know, if you have a damaged or, you know, um, not functioning body part that and you're required to use, you, you know, let's say, say your thumb and you're missing your thumb or something, can be quite embarrassing to use. Um, I would say that's a con for me, but overall, I mean, that is the wave. This is where we are. And for a lot of people, it's inexpensive. For a lot of companies, it's quick. Recognition is fast. So those are some of the pros of biometric security. And I don't think it's going anywhere, guys. Do you? I think it's here to stay. Coming in at number one. Do you want to guess? Okay, try. Okay, it's 4G. 4G, right? You think 4G, uh, big deal. It's a huge deal because with the advent of 4G, bandwidth has increased up to like 80 megabytes per second when it's optimal, right? A lot of people think about it. The last time you actually watched TV, well, you're watching this show, so of course, but a lot of people are no longer just sitting, waiting for a broadcast to happen. They are streaming YouTube, they are streaming uh, Netflix, they're streaming their favorite TV shows anytime they want. And that I think is the largest, most major advance for 4G in this market. So let's talk about 4G. First to come into market here as a telecom company, yeah, you guessed it, MTN, that was in 2016. And before that, it was a Swedish company called Telia, and they actually set up 4G in the world. It was first in the world that was back in 20, 2009, I believe. And anyway, 4G is here to stay. It's taken over from 2G and 3G. And if you're not on 4G right now, you're in the past. And that's the show for me today. Those are my top five technological advancements that has happened for mobile and it has affected all of our lives whether we like it or not for good or for better i think mostly for good right so you think about things like touch screen you're able to scroll through you're able to put on your biometric security on your phones and other devices people can't just hack in well people can still try to hack in but it's harder you know so security wise levels have changed and also things like 4g you're able to watch whatever you want anytime you want i think these are major right now and that's the show for me today i loved doing it as always guys don't forget to subscribe to like and turn on your notifications so every single time we load a new video you'll get to hear about it first and we're always everywhere else we're on instagram we're on twitter we're on facebook and of course right here on youtube so don't forget one more time if you like the video please subscribe to our channel thank you until next time, goodbye for now from me, your girl, Faith History. Toodles!